Of course, one of the easiest ways to ensure that you stay safe on the streets is to always wear a helmet. Really important, really easy. Again, I've worn a helmet all my life. Never actually used one in the sense of needing it to cushion my head, but boy, I know that if that ever happens, I'll be glad to have it. Um, there's all kinds of helmets out there. One neat thing that's uh, happening these days is that they're really adjustable with an easy click in the back so that you don't need to worry too much about the adjustment. But I just want to show you a few things um, the, about helmet fit that will help. And some other things to point out. I've got a lot of stuff on my helmet. Um, you don't have to do it this way, but I think having a rear view mirror is really helpful just to know what's coming behind you. Um, ones on your helmet are great, uh, but they're also handlebar mount mounted ones that work fine. And then the other thing I put on my helmet is lights. Uh, lights are really key for riding at night. Um, you'll want to have both a red rear light um, and a front white light. And having both a, a blinking option and a steady is obviously very helpful. Most lights come with that. Uh, the blinking light is to let people know you're coming. The steady is if you get in a really dark area like in the middle of Cherokee Park or something like that. Uh, but basically I just leave those off during the day uh, and keep them on my helmet so they're always there. Now some basic things about the helmet fit. Um, you'll see a lot of times people riding with their helmets cranked back. This is an important part of your head that you want to protect. So it's important that it sits right on the top of your head, right around that brow line, uh, and then you click it on and you're ready to go. You want these straps nice and tight so that the helmet can't move around a lot. And again, that, that rear clicker can help with that. Last thing you might want to put on before you go is a, a, a simple leg band to keep your leg pants clean out of the, uh, out of the gears. Um, and then a few other things you might want to have. Um, a water bottle and cage is great. You know, it's really hot in Louisville. I like to have my water with me. It's not necessary, but a good thing to have. Also, fenders are great. If you want to do year-round riding, it really helps to have fenders to catch the rain to keep it off of you. Um, so I think we're pretty much ready to go. One last thing to mention is some tools to take with you on a ride. It's always good to have with you a patch kit. Uh, that, that has the, the basics for if you get a flat. Um, of course, you'll also want a pump. So what I bring is one of these mini pumps. So it fits in my bag really easy. I don't even remember it's there. Uh, and a multi-tool is good to have. Okay, let's get on the road and I'll show you a few more things about using the road. fun getting to campus instead of it being a pain and boy I don't have to search for parking it's easy. Um, one thing you'll notice is that as I rode in of course this is one exception to the rule of don't use sidewalks. On campus that's how you get around. Um, but our campus pathways are always 
pedestrians first. So you got to watch out for people on foot. Always don't speed through campus. Um, you know, if you're passing someone, you might want to signal to let them know that you're coming. Um, we just have had a lot of close calls on campus with uh, pedestrians nearly getting hit or feeling like they're going to get hit by a cyclist. So it's, it's really important that we respect everybody on campus and just take it easy. Um, go slow through campus and let people know you're coming. Um, once you get here, uh, locking up your bike is really important, obviously. Um, if you invested a lot of money in a bike, you don't want to get it stolen. Even, uh, even a not very expensive bike could be a subject of theft. The bikes are one of the most common things stolen on campus, so it's really important that you lock it up to a rack uh, and you do so securely. Um, what I use is a, a U-lock with a cable attachment. Um, the truth is that thieves are really good at cutting just cables, um, so you want to use a good sturdy U-lock. Those are really hard for thieves to cut, um, and they're the most secure thing. So what I, it's important to do is not just to lock your frame, but to lock your wheels as well. And I learned this when I, once when I locked a, my frame to a, a sign and I came back and all that was left was the frame because they'd stolen the wheel. So here's a good trick for combining a cable and a U-lock and getting your whole bike locked up. Um, you can get the front wheel and the frame with just the U-lock, but you can also thread the cable through the rear wheel and get the whole thing at once. So that's secure, nobody can steal the wheels or the frame. So it's key for both your bike security and everybody else's security to make sure you always use our bike racks instead of locking to railings or handicap ramps or in a place that would block exits. Um, this campus is for everybody, so make sure you're thinking about the other users, especially people who uh, are handicapped and, and need that access. And you certainly don't want to lock to one of these. These are our new bike fix-it stations here at U of L, um, and they're really handy for keeping your bike uh, running with some really basic maintenance. So I'm just going to show you quickly how to use them. Uh, the simple thing is you hang your bike from the seat uh, right in there, uh, and then you have access to a bunch of things uh, that you can use to maintain your bike. Um, the simplest one is our pump. So uh, this pump is able to handle both uh, Schrader and Presta valves. Uh, and it's really simple. You just pick off the cap and pull the yellow lever up, lock it in there, and then we'll pump away. And the pump has a pressure gauge on it too to show you how much pressure you have in your tire. Um, your tire will tell you on the side what the pressure reading should be, but something between 65 and 85 PSI is probably what you want. Um, so you can just pump up your tires, put that yellow lever back, pull it off. That's the sound of the pressure releasing from the pump, not your tire, don't worry. Um, so that's how the pump works. And then there's a whole bunch of other great tools on here that you can use. They're all hanging from cables. Uh, it's a variety of different things. Um, a couple screwdrivers, there's a Phillips head screwdriver and a flat head screwdriver. Uh, we've also got a small wrench, which is really handy on bikes. There's two different sizes there you can use to fit on different things. Um, this larger wrench is for adjusting a headset or maybe for adjusting your bearings. There's a cone wrench there. This is a really handy thing for any cyclist to have, which is a whole set of these Allen wrenches, these hexagonal um, wrenches. There's a lot of those uh, that you'll need to adjust on a bike. There's a bunch of different sizes here that all collapse in. And then the last thing to mention are these tire levers. So what these are, are for getting your tire off if you have a flat and you need to change it. I'm going to show you how to use the, our new bike fix-it stations just to uh, fix a flat if that's what you have. Um, first thing you got to do is just take your valve cap off and then maybe let some air out of your, let the air out of your tire if there's any remaining. Once it's fully flat, that's when you use these two tire levers to wedge the tire off. So these guys are going to slip in between your rim and your tire. Just like that. And you sometimes 
uh, have a really tight tire and you need to use both at once. That's why there's two of them. And the idea is to get up under that tire bead and pull it out and then pull it around. There, once my tire is loose, to get the tube out, I just have to remove the stem from the rim. And now I've got my tube with my tire liner, which is a great thing for protecting against flats. Uh, and if I had a hole here, I could patch it if I had a patch kit, or I could pull the whole thing out and put a brand new tube in. So once you've got that new tube or patch tube back in, you just start by getting your Valve stem through that hole in your rim, reline the tube back in so it sits nice, and now you just got to get this bead back into the rim. Once it's all set, all you got to do then is just pump it back up. Might want to check to make sure that it's seating properly and not bolting out anywhere. Looks good to me. And again, this tire gauge will tell you just how much pressure you've got in your tire. And it'll say on the side of your tire what the recommended pressure is, usually something like 65 to 85 pounds per square inch is what you want. Alright, we're ready to ride again. Pull your bike off the rack and you're ready to go. Using bike for transportation can seem really complicated and sometimes you need to help uh, to do it a little better. Until you always want to keep learning, right? And uh, get some mutual support. So there's a bunch of great ways you can um, learn more and uh, get mutual support in Louisville. Uh, Bicycling for Louisville is a local advocacy organization that um, also does educational uh, projects from time to time so you'll be able to sign up for free classes there. Our Get Healthy Now program here on campus office offers bike safety courses. There is a, a student cycling club here on campus and of course the Louisville Bicycle Club offers new rider clinics throughout the year. So those are some great tips for you for using a bike for transportation around town. But there's a lot more resources out there. I want to let everybody know that we have a whole page on the U of L sustainability website, louisville.edu slash sustainability, which is just focused on tips, ideas, videos, and instructions for using a bike for transportation.